All right, welcome back, everybody. Well, today is the day you're going to learn how to play Eminence Front by The Who and the great little noodling guitar work done by Pete Townsend on this song. And um, never knew this was on a B bender, but he did it on a B bender. So I've still got my buddies. B-Bender Telly, so that's what we're going to do. So we'll talk about the chord structure, some tasty little parts, but most of the lesson I'll spend on that great intro lead that he does to open up the song. So hey, if you haven't done so already and you like this kind of thing, please do click subscribe and ring the bell. The bell lets you know when I drop new content, which I do every single week. All my videos have chapters in them, so you can jump right to the part of the lesson that you want to see and bypass what you don't. And if you're looking for ways to support the channel, I really appreciate that. There's thanks, which is a button right below. You can just like throw in a tip in the tip jar, or you can join my Patreon page where I've got chord charts and tabs and exclusive content um, for all my Patreon members that join me there. All the links are in the description. Check it out. Okay, so Eminence Front. Um, loved this song all my life. I know Pete played this on a Schechter um, telly that he had. He had a, a couple of them that were made for him. They had humbuckers in them, uh, but it still had that great telly um, sound, but just a little tougher. Um, and on this one, apparently, he used a B-Bender um, version of that guitar, and I actually never knew that. And then when I heard that, I started listening to these little parts, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is a B-Bender. You know, all these little parts start standing out. I was like, yeah, that that does sound like a B-Bender. So we're going to go through all of those. Okay, so getting tone on this song, you know, it's not ultra clean, but it's not ultra distorted. So just find a little place in between with a little bit of overdrive on it. I've got a little bit of overdrive on here. I'll put my gear settings down in the description if you want to check it out. Um, but this song is in standard tuning and it's in F. And um, there's basically, for the most part, this entire song bounces between two chords. It's like an F minor. And we don't play these as chords, but it's basically an F minor and a C-sharp major 7th. And if you think about that F minor chord, all, all that's doing when you're moving to the next one is moving your note that's on the 5th string up one fret from your C to your C-sharp. And you play everything else the same in terms of a chord. So you can see how they're related. See that? But that's really what's happening um, chordally through the song, right? But, you know, he's not really playing chords a whole lot. You know, he's playing this. Right? He just plays those two notes. And the bass changes to the C sharp. And you play this over it. Right? So that's an easy one, right? So that's happening. Um, so that just carries through the verses, even the chorus, you know, that's the chord movement that's happening. But um, like I said, again, the guitar is actually pretty minimal in the song. Really, the rhythm section is driven by the bass and the keyboards and the drums. Um, and Pete's guitar is just sort of color jumping in and out. And it's not stepping on everything. It's pretty cool. Now there is a part in the song where it sort of goes to a, uh, a turnaround chord, I guess you would call it, um, and the, which is usually the fifth of your, of your chord, right? And the fifth of your F is a C. Um, and he plays some version of a, or inversion of a C, and I'm not 100%, can't get sort of uh, consensus on what I think this is, but... That's what I'm going to go with. It's a C with a fifth in it, and everything else is barred straight across um, on the third fret. So that part where it goes, you know, like, dress yourself to kill. You know, it's not, it's not that, it's not, it's not minor. So I that's where I'm that's where I'm going with it. You know, back to your F. So chords, F minor, 
C-sharp major 7th. That's one voicing. This is another voicing. That's another voicing. And then your C. So that's basically all the chords. There's one other sort of rhythm or chordal part, I guess you'd call it, um, that happens in this. It sort of breaks everything up. Um, and he's playing basically triads. Um, and he's, far as I can tell, he's just really playing them on the fourth, third, and second string. Um, but it's the part where it goes. That part. He doesn't play him like that. Um, he's playing him just pretty much on the second, third, and fourth string. So it's going down to an A flat, to an E flat, and then it's coming up to a different voicing of a uh, B flat to an F. Okay, so those first two. Back up again, and then we go to this voicing of a B flat to an F. You could do, you could also do that, but I think it resolves on those higher notes when I listen to the record closely. to kill. Right? That's just, that vocal line is just the... Just that scale, right? The F minor scale. Dress yourself to kill. So... That's really kind of it <laughs> for uh, for pretty much the whole song, except for this great intro noodling lead that he does, and that's what I want to spend most of my time on here. So, um, so again, now this, all these parts, except for one, as far as I can tell, um, or maybe two, you could do without the B bender. You could do all those bends um, without having that. Um, piece on there. You can still make those licks work. But there's something very smooth about the B bender and you can hear it in the licks once you sort of realize that he was using that, um, that it makes sense and you can sort of hear it. And for those of you who might not know what a B bender is, the 10 second lesson on a B bender is that there's a mechanism hooked up in this guitar that takes your B string and when you stretch this out, when you move your neck down, it moves your B string up a whole step or two frets. So they call that a B bender. Okay, so this great intro uh, solo here. So again, we're in F um, and we're gonna be alternating between F minor and a C sharp major seventh. Those are the two chords that we're going back and forth on that we're gonna solo over. And in terms of technique, what I've found, when listening very closely to this, is that um, he, is other than the the actual bends that are happening with the B bender, um, he's actually not bending strings very much. Um, it's very much almost like he's purposefully not. He's not. He's not doing a lot of bends off the third string. Um, I think there's maybe one, one maybe two times where he does, but it's. Um, but most of it, in terms of approach, is not trying not to bend other than the B-bender bends, right? And even those are very minimal. So let's start with our intro, right? So we're gonna bend, we're gonna start on the seventh of our F, which is an E-flat, and we're going to use the B-bender, we're gonna bend up into our F. Right, you can kind of hear that. That's different sounding than It's just a little different, you know. So that's the first part. Then we're going to come down 
and get ourselves into an F minor pentatonic piece. It's the first part of it. Right? Then we're going to sort of noodle on this. So all that together. Then our next part, I think there's a lot of controversy actually out on the inter internet of how, uh, how this is to be played, this little quick little run that he does. And I actually slowed it down on YouTube. You can use the speed control if you haven't seen that before, if you're trying to pick out, you know, pick out little quick parts of songs. And um, what I've learned is this little speed part is this. And many on YouTube land are playing it like this. Where they put that other B flat note in there. And I actually think that sounds great. It's hard to play. And it sort of sounds like it is that, but I slowed it down um, and it's not, it's this. Right? And you can hear that here. Then he finishes that off with a F minor pentatonic run that's going to just take you um, sort of almost top to the bottom of the scale. We're going to end up down here, but it's something like this. And you sort of grab that, that thing on the way up. But the important part to hit is this sort of this walk down. I may have a couple notes out of order there, but it's it's basically walking down that F minor pentatonic. Right? And then he climbs back up. And notice that's not a bend. It's not, it's this. And that's like the little things that I'm hearing where he's, he's not, I feel like he's, on purpose not bending because he just wants that effect which is a very different thing then okay so let's pull all that together so far So then we're going to come up here and we're going to make a D shape on the 8th and ninth fret. And that D shape is, I, I think, is it's part of like an F minor 7 because we're playing an F, uh, F and C sharp, and we sort of need to be in that mindset. Um, but what he does is he, he, I believe, he's making this shape here and you're going to bend, we're going to use our B bender to bend this note up two frets. And we're going to drag our pick back and get all three of those strings. Really quick. I'm going to come up to our uh, F position at the 13th fret. And uh, again, position like we're going to do a pentatonic bend. But we're going to use the B bender. So as we, as we lift off that B bender, we're just gonna grab that F. And again, if you don't have a B bender, which I'm sure 99% of you don't, when you're, if you're playing along, perfectly fine to, right? Just to do that bend. He does a little uh, flub, uh, I don't know if it's a flub, but it's just, it's not a perfect run that he comes down on that. 
he, he hits a couple notes in there and, and it's okay. He does sort of a, a stutter step. But, but really what you want to get to is you want to get to a point where you're going to grab this, uh, what is that note? That's a E flat, um, a 16th fret on the B string. And you're going to lay your finger down on the first fret on your G string to give you that. And then to your B banner. Okay, and in context. When it goes to that C sharp, right? On that chord there. That's why that works. Following that, he's going to do a sort of a classic um, F minor pentatonic um, blues riff here. And here's where I think he does do a, a, a bend on the G string, but it but he bends it very quickly. You're not sort of, it's not a clapped in. It's not that, it's very quick. So the notes there are. Is how I'm hearing it. And he does a stutter step there. So he stops on that, on that um, E flat, and then he picks up again. So if you think about the scale, you know, your basic F minor pentatonic. He does a, that first part is a run. He skips that, he skips that F note. And then he picks it back up again from the, the B flat on the G string. So. One more. Okay. And that's going into this part. So all that in context. And then here is where he hits a sour note. There's a great video by a guy named Fran Capitanelli and he hit, he calls this the clam. And it's right, he is, it is the clam. Clam is the note that you sort of, one might call it a mistake note, one might call it a jazz note. But uh, you're gonna, you're fingering um, on the 15th fret on your G and your B string, and you're going to pull up on your B bender. So you're changing that D to an E. That note just seems a little out of place, right? Yeah. But it goes by so fast and it works and it's Pete. And who cares? It's great. So all this in context up here, let's put them all together. And then it finishes off with this. So again, not hitting that root F note. It's that 13th fret on the D string, which makes it an E flat. But again, not a, not a bend. It's not that. It's to my ear, it is anyway. Now, if there's one part of the solo that I wanted to learn, and that sort of makes it for me, it's this part here, this last little lick that happens over a C sharp major seven. You know, all the other stuff is great, you could get away with doing anything you want in F sharp, or I mean in F minor pentatonic over all of this, and it would work. But this thing is such a great way to cap off this solo in my mind. Um, so this is playing over C sharp major seven, and I believe it's off of this voicing of C sharp major seven. So what happens is, 
um, he's going to hit your um, C sharp. And uh, you're going to skip the, the fourth string. And you're going to go to your third string, your second string, and your first string. Moving from fourth to third, right? So it's that. But there's one extra little part that always bothered me. And again, it's the B bender. Um, he does a very, it's like an accidental bend on that B string, just slightly. Did you catch that? He does that little. It just climbs it up just a little bit. And I, he doesn't, it's not bending a full or a, even a half step. It's just a, I think it's a mistake, but it just sounds great. And then you're going to pull it down. So that whole thing in context. And he does that little stutter again, where, you know, the normal thing that most people do is like you fill up every little eighth note or 16th or whatever the rhythmic pattern is. Most people fill it with the note, but what Pete does throughout this solo a couple times is he he goes for a little bit, then he stops for a beat, goes back goes back up the scale just slightly, and then starts over again, right? So you know he just stops for a beat, but that's how it closes out. Okay, so let's see if I can cover that whole thing. I'm going to go, I'm going to try and do it slowly. Flub the end there a little bit, but uh, there you go. Okay, and that is Eminence Front by The Who and the Pinball Wizardry of Pete Townsend. So, hope you learned something new today. Um, hey, if you haven't done so already and you like this, click subscribe, ring the bell. The bell lets you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this video, and if there's another one you want me to do, another song, um, let me know that too. Okay, all right, well, until next week, take care, everybody.